Greetings, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Topic UFO. I am your host, Rick Schooler. Tonight, we're going to be speaking to Denise David Williams, who is a film producer with Make Magic Productions in Los Angeles, California. She'll be joining us uh, via Skype here in just a moment. Denise is working on a new film about Dr. John Mack. And uh, very interesting story here. For those of you that aren't familiar with Dr. Mack, he was uh, the Harvard psychiatry professor who, uh, after uh, reluctantly uh, agreeing to work with these alleged uh, alien abductees, and then coming out and stating that he actually believed their story, he was shunned and took a took a very bad turn in his life. Very amazing story. So can't wait to talk to Denise. Before we get to Denise, uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of quick things to you. Uh, number one, one of our viewers out there is working on a new project, and I told her I would give her a shout out about it. She's working on a new international online network that promotes unity through art. So if you're into art and or unity, uh, you may want to check out her site. Uh, you can do so at www.unity.gallery It's free and it's open to everybody. Also, coming up, uh, the 2014 MUFON Symposium is coming up on July 17th through the 20th. It's being held at the uh, Ground, Crown Plaza Hotel in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Uh, this is the 45th annual MUFON Symposium, and it appears the theme uh, this year will be UFOs and the media. So if you want to check out that or you want some uh, additional information, you can do so at MUFONSymposium.org. Okay, we'll be right back. Just a minute, we'll be speaking to Denise David Williams. Don't go away. What was that like to hear it? What's it like to hear it now? Um, it's easier now because I've heard it so many times, mm -hmm. but it still brings up emotions. And that's what made me believe that something happened because I couldn't deny my emotions. I heard your own father didn't believe you until he heard the tape. Now, that is sort of what we call one of those blood curtain uh, screams. Mm -hmm. that's, you know? Well, it's not that my father didn't believe me, but it's just to hear the story, um, it's hard to fathom, it's hard to accept. But when he saw the tape and heard the emotions associated with it, he knew there was something there. And for myself, that's, I knew there was something real there. Dr. Mack, what does this all mean? What is all of this, you know, the book where you talk to hundreds of patients and describe in detail what they say they have experienced, you with your credentials coming from Harvard, um, what do you think this all means? Well, let me explain first why I concluded this is not psychiatric, why uh -huh. these people are not psychiatrically disturbed. What? Well, because okay. I was concerned. When I first heard about this, I thought this must be madness. But when I heard that hundreds of thousands of people why all over the country... Why not a publicity stunt? Why not just... Because these people, like Peter, you can, I can't tell you how difficult it is to get people to go on television to talk about this. People are not interested in being before the public. They're very ashamed because they get ridiculed, humiliated about it. This is not something anybody does uh, or this is not a club anybody wants to belong to. This is not something people do because they want to be filmed or get on publicity. It's very difficult to get people to come forth uh -huh. and acknowledge they've had these experiences. Yes, and I've, heard, I've read interviews with people who have come forward years ago who wish that they hadn't at this point. Go ahead. So when I heard of it, hundreds of thousands of people all over the country from various polls, we know maybe even millions of people have had very similar experiences. They don't know each other. The details that they're describing were not in the media. They have nothing to gain by it. They feel ashamed about it. That's number one. 
When I also heard that this was occurring in children as young as two or three years old, that ruled out personality explanations. It's associated with UFOs independently observed by witnesses, by media, by neighbors. It's also associated with physical findings and, as said before, the people when examined are not psychiatrically disturbed. So the only thing that behaves like that is real experience. Yeah, you Dreams say that it's trauma, trauma, that it's trauma. It's traumatic. Not, yeah. Real experiences are the only thing that occurs like that. Psychosis isn't like that. Madness is not like that. Dreams are not like that. Fantasy is not like that. Now, if these are real experiences, what is going on? Welcome back, everyone. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our guest for the evening. She is working on a film called The John Mack Story, or John Mack, A True Story. I will we'll verify that. Uh, please welcome Miss Denise David Williams. Denise, are you out there, ma'am? I am. Hi, Rick. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for uh, for being on the show uh, tonight. Um, as I told you, I've had uh, a few different producers uh, working on different films uh, over the past couple of years of doing this program. But I don't think I've ever had anyone um, as accomplished as yourself. You have quite, quite the successful background in the film industry. Thank you. What? How long have you been? Uh, you've been working in the uh, entertainment industry. A long time since I was about three. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> about twenty-five years. Wow. Uh, then some. I I uh, went to USC film school, graduate school. And then my very first job in Hollywood, uh, I was completely green. I got to work in pre-production on E.T. and Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was an amazing entree into Hollywood. Amazing, yes. And then I had a uh, the series of jobs where I literally got to work with some of the best writers and directors in Hollywood. And I, I really learned how to develop a story and uh, and uh, put the pieces of a film together. And I was vice president of a company called Copelson Entertainment. And uh, we the company won an Oscar for Best Picture for Platoon. So I've had some experience uh, in the business. And now I have the privilege, and then that's sincerely how I feel, to shepherd John Mack's incredible story to the screen. You know, uh, I, I was going to ask you with with all the stories that are out there, uh, you know, available or you could go after to make a movie out of. What was it that that drew you to the John Mack story? Well, I have to really say that the story found me. I did not find the story. The the series of events that brought me to uh, knowing about John Mack is really quite magical and serendipitous. And uh, I, I, my ears started ringing out of nowhere and I couldn't ignore it. And I was led to a woman in the back of a metaphysical bookstore in Los Angeles. And she told me about John Mack and within three minutes of hearing about him, I was like, oh, my God, this is this is something that I absolutely have to do. And I understood it right away. Um, I empathized with John Mack's story. I thought he was incredibly courageous, uh, given his credentials. And uh, I started to pursue the details of the story. And I met with his family members. And after four and a half years of of gaining their trust, they finally granted me the life rights to do his story, which is really quite an honor. Wow. It's got to be handled. You know, it could be handled a lot of different ways. And my job is to make sure that it's handled in the classiest, most authentic and sincere way possible. Now, I understand that I guess there there have been conversations about this story with with the major studios, uh, but a decision or your decision was to to go about this more independently is is that the case yes we my team and i there's a lot of interest in hollywood to do this as a major motion picture 
No. You know, because it's the perfect it's the perfect story for a for a film. Mm -hmm. It's a hero's journey. He's an incredible protagonist. He comes up against all kinds of adversity and challenges, and uh, and you know the ending is. Well, I'm not going to give away the ending, but it's a it's a powerful story. So yes, there is a lot of interest. I met with many top com companies who were extremely interested in getting involved, and I actually partnered with one for 14 months. And what was asked of me was that I turn over 100% creative control to these companies. Oh. And that's never going to be an option. Never. I had given my word to the family and to many of the abductees who I've uh, befriended and to many of John's friends and colleagues that I would oversee this project. And um, so, so, and it's not surprising, I mean, I understand Hollywood and it is not surprising at all that that would be the request. You know, this is a great story, thank you for bringing it to us and now it's ours. Right. But as I said, I was not willing to hand it over. So what we decided to do was to raise development funds independently. And that would in enable us to develop the script in-house. And uh, so that's what we're doing. Excellent. Excellent. So can you, uh, you know, for the viewers that may not be familiar with John Mack, uh, Dr. John Mack, can you just kind of give us a brief overview of, of what happened to this man? Yeah, absolutely. So Dr. John Mack was uh, an esteemed professor of psychiatry at Harvard. He was a Pulitzer Prize winning author. And he was a very respected doctor and scientist, world renowned. And he was asked to read a chapter on uh, uh, called Alien Encounters as a Transformation, Transformation of Crisis. Um, I'm sorry, as a crisis of transformation. And he read it, and it was you know, kind of interesting to him. But in fact, he had asked Carl Sagan many years before what Carl thought of the subject of alien abductions. And Carl had told him, John, there's nothing to it. So John had dismissed it. So cut to many years later, and John read this chapter, Alien Encounters as a Crisis of Transformation. And it was interesting, but he put it aside. And then he was introduced to a man named Bud Hopkins. And Bud Hopkins had been kind of a de facto support person uh, for abductees for many, many years. He was a well-known New York artist, and he was kind of in over his head. So he went looking for a psychiatrist who could help him, and he contacted John. And John was reluctant, but he became curious what the underlying psychiatric syndrome might be to the phenomenon. So he decided to meet over 200 abductees, but he was embarrassed to meet with them in his office at Harvard. So he set up a makeshift office in his home, in his son's bedroom. And one by one, these abductees came and he went to a great deal of trouble to keep them apart so they wouldn't influence each other. And he used his entire psychiatric arsenal to test them. And John was shocked with his findings. He said, I know mental illness, and these people are not mentally ill. They are not lying, and they're not crazy. Someone has to champion them. So what John did was travel the world to corroborate their stories. He met with Australian Aborigines. He met with African shaman. And, and they, they were telling the exact same abduction story. John said on one of the talk shows, um, when you have an African Bushman and an upscale New England housewife basically telling the same story, that's a conversation we need to take seriously. Un unbelievable stuff. Uh, now, he, he gathered all this information, but then at some point, I guess, when he went public with his findings, that's kind of when all hell broke loose? Exactly, and that's the very next thing that happened. He put his findings in a, in a best-selling book, Abduction, and he went on a worldwide media tour. And when Harvard saw their head of psychiatry on national television basically saying aliens were real, they were mortified. 
And so what they did was they convened a secret committee to try to discredit him, to take away his tenure, to ruin his reputation. And for 14 months, they put him through the equivalent of a witch hunt. He was mocked in the press. His colleagues stopped talking to him. His wife and his friends thought he had lost his mind. But the incredible thing about Dr. Mack was, even though he hadn't gone looking for this, he believed he had stumbled on something that had great value and was truthful in some way. Mm -hmm. And he did not turn away. And he continued to champion the abductees literally to the day he died. So he, in my opinion, was truly a modern day Galileo because he, 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 he was taken down a path and he had the courage to continue down the path, risking everything, really, because it, it, it ruined his reputation a great deal. His wife divorced him. And to this day, many of his friends think that he committed professional suicide. Right. What, uh, you know, I was thinking about it just today, and, and I'm sure we've all had those times in our lives when when we have been shunned for some reason or another. Uh, but something on the scale uh, of, of Dr. Mack, uh, I just can't imagine what that must have been like. I mean, because here he was, this Pulitzer Prize winning uh, psychiatric uh, professor at Harvard and and basically just cut down just cut down like weeds huh uh, yeah pretty much I mean if you look at some of the headlines it's just shameful that this esteemed doctor would be mocked in the press like that but you know shifting a paradigm which is what John Mack was really asking for us to do. I mean, Harvard said, John, if only you had said you had discovered some new psychiatric syndrome, but John, you're asking us to redefine reality, which is exactly what he was doing. And, you know, that's important. That's that, that you know, 20 years ago, he was he was just on the cutting edge, but today, that's a conversation that we really do need to take seriously because in the in western culture in particular we are very you know if we don't see something or we don't feel something we tend to say it doesn't exist we even the concept of intuition which is something that john it opened to you know by his own words he described that he went from being a left brain materialistic worldview, rational kind of guy to becoming an intuitive, heart-based, spiritual man. And so, you know, at the very heart of it, just even if we have a conversation about intuition, which in my opinion is the beginning of the conversation, because we are all as humans, much, we are six sensory, but we tend to only give credence to our five senses. So, um, even for that small portion of the larger conversation that John initiated, our culture is hesitant. You know, people will use the expression, God, I had a feeling about that. Or, you know, something told me not to go to work that day and then something horrible happened. So we'll entertain that subject on a, in a very superficial way, but actually have a conversation in depth about what it means to use all of our senses and to open up to a larger paradigm that's a conversation that is we need to have. And that's why this film is really urgent. It's, it's urgent to ignite that conversation about who are we really? Are we alone in the universe? Is there more to than what we just see and, and feel? In my opinion, absolutely. And it's a conversation we should take seriously. If this movie uh, gets made, how long how long do you think process do you think that uh, will be? How long does it take to to put together a, a movie like this and to get it out on the screen? Well, let me say this: I'm seven years into this process. Seven years. So um, 
But I believe that those seven years were the heavy lifting years. And now we, um, as I said, we once we have our development funds, we'll develop a script within three to six months, package it, and go into production. So it really depends if the people who all around the world, and literally I'm contacted by people all around the world who love John, who admire John, who defend John. If if people will step up and, and give whatever they can to contribute to this film, which is truly about and for all of us, then this process will happen quickly. I would say within the year, we will have, we can be in production and heading toward a theatrical release. That is completely realistic. And where can people go to contribute uh, to get this film going? They can go to johnmacmovie.com. That's our campaign. And, uh, you know, anything that can be contributed is helpful. So don't be swayed. I, I don't, I don't, want listeners or people who are watching this to be swayed by how big a goal we have or the small amount that they're able to contribute. If we can all just pool our intention to make this happen, it will happen. It's important. It's a story that can truly impact the world. I I really, really believe that, that it's a message that is for now. Right now is the time for this film to happen. You know, we can think back uh, in, in history to films that impacted the world. Close Encounters of the Third Kind is, is an example, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. That film touched so many hearts and minds around the world. It was important in its day to begin the dialogue. It definitely began the dialogue that we are now in a position to continue but in a more authentic and more real way, because John Mack was a real person. The work he did was authentic and sincere. And this is not a fantasy, this film. This is reality. What, uh, I'm just curious what your personal beliefs are uh, regarding alien abductions. Would, would you mind talking about that? No, not at all. What do you uh, what do you think of some of these stories that uh, that come out? We've had several uh, people on this program who uh, claim to have been abducted, have told their stories. Um, what, what what are your thoughts? Well, I'll go back to when I was talking about intuition. I came to this planet with a highly developed intuition and. And when you have that, and we all have the capacity for that, but when when you have that, it's very natural to have experiences that are beyond the physical. So I've had those kind of experiences, not abduction experiences, but metaphysical experiences my entire life. Meaning, you know, people who've passed over, talk, have spoken with me, or all kinds of things. So I... I'm completely open to the possibility that we exist in a multi-dimensional universe, that there, as John Mack said, there is a mystery there that has value and is truthful. And I am completely open to it, completely open to it. You know, I, I've always found it amazing that... Um... You know, I don't think the whole subject of of uh, another race of beings, uh, you know, if you want to call them aliens, call them aliens. But is it any more bizarre than a lot of the religions in this world? But yet when somebody brings up the topic of, of UFOs and aliens, they're looked at like, you know, a lot of people look at it like like you're crazy. You know, that's a good point, Rick. But when when John was under so much criticism at Harvard, Alan Dershowitz, who was a law professor at the time at Harvard, came forward and defended him in an editorial. It was in the New York Times. And he he said 
Isn't it interesting at an esteemed place of higher learning such as Harvard, angels are okay, but aliens are not? Which is exactly to your point. You could walk across campus and go to the theology department and study angels and get a degree in angels. But when John Mack started talking about aliens, you know, it was completely uh, unacceptable. Also, something that I find really interesting is our founding fathers wrote about uh, aliens Mm -hmm. and the UFO phenomenon. You can go to the Library of Congress and read uh, records of George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, talking about their metaphysical experiences and their experiences with sightings. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's also been uh, very compelling arguments made that the Bible references alien abductions and sightings and very compelling arguments uh, when certain passages are dissected. Well, you know, I think a lot of people um, feel that the alien topic, the UFO topic in the Bible are probably, if you were to mesh those two together, the truth would be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, probably. You know what I'm yeah, you're right. Well, listen, uh, Denise, I, I, I want to thank you for coming on the program and and telling us about this this film. Um, again, uh, can you repeat the uh, the uh, URL again? Yeah, it's JohnMacMovie.com. All right. And uh, like you say, every little bit uh, helps. Uh, how many people are there in the world, work, working class people? There's got to be enough <laughs> to, to exactly. make this happen. Exactly. Exactly. People who, you know, uh, are want this topic to be, you know, brought out into the open. People who love John Mack, people who believe that it's time for a paradigm shift. I mean, there are so many across the board reasons to help bring this into being if each person just gave whatever they could we would more than get there more than get there so i'm really asking that uh you know folks do what they can and it will be an extremely valuable contribution i i I promise that thank you so much for taking time out of your day i know you're a very busy busy woman so i appreciate it i'm sure the viewers appreciate it and uh, thank you again. Thanks so much, Rick. I All appreciate right. it. You have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Open the door, you'll find the secret. To find the answer is to keep it. You'll believe it when you